Whoa. Oh, I love these things. I think we're all just gonna like take your memorizer and say not very well. Hail your new god. Oh this thing. Ladies and gentlemen, people, the bell has rung before class has begun. Therefore, you should be seeing this is ready and says, class, you should be aware that you should have the worksheet that returned last time. We're going to go over problem number four from that <coughs> uh, We are going to talk about this item right here, which is called space work. We will have a lab due next, next time. Class, is the lab due next time? No. Class, when is the lab due? <laughs> For you guys, that makes it Monday of next week. Next time at the beginning of the class, we will have a quiz on sections one through three of chapter five. After that, we will head to the computer lab to work on the Excel portion of the lab we're starting today. It is a no-no today as far as your optional three reminders concerned. The book's optional for next time. And while you're working on today's lab, I will be returning a bunch of stuff. Space warp. This right here is a toy that I received for as a Christmas present at some point during middle school. About 10 years ago, my mom found it in the attic and she said, I bet this has something to do with physics. Would you like it back? And I said, yes, yes, I would. I then spent eight hours putting this together for you. <laughs> Thank you. And I will tell you, it was certainly worth it. recognition that some of you have a difficult time thinking with that going, I have turned it off so we can now discuss it, because there is a lot of physics involved in space war. Physics. Something having to do with, why did I get it out now? What does this have to do with what we're learning right now? Benedict. Okay, well, there's certainly kinetic energy. There's energy of motion in here. There's certainly kinetic energy. Yes, Ben? Uh, also, the potential energy of gravity changes. Okay, so, so hold up. So, when we have the steel sphere at the top, it clearly has gravitational potential energy. If we set the zero line at the lab table, we can see it has positive gravitational potential energy. When I let go of it, what happens to that gravitational potential energy, Claire? <coughs> Changes more descriptive. How does it change? Does it increase or decrease? It decreases, right? As you can see, the height above the zero line decreases, therefore, the gravitational potential energy decreases. Where does that gravitational potential energy go? Hunter? Um, sure. Where does the gravitational potential energy go? We start out with gravitational potential energy, and as time goes by, it decreases. wants to help him out, Jack, goes to kinetic energy. But that's not the only place, right? You can see it clearly speeds up, so it goes to kinetic energy. So is mechanical energy conserved on space warp class? Ah, that was a good one, clearly. We, we're not very sure. When is mechanical energy conserved? Learner. When there's no friction, right? Is there no friction on space warp? <clears throat> no. There has to be friction, right? Okay, so because there's friction, the gravitational potential energy is converted to both kinetic energy and it's converted to internal energy and sound. Listen to it as it goes. You can hear it. That is energy. We have sound energy. So gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. 
It's also converted to heat energy. Believe it or not, because of friction, the track actually heats up a little bit, and so does the steel sphere. In the absence of friction, I actually wouldn't need this, the elevator. I would simply take this, place it up here, and the track would go, and then I could have the track come all the way back up to the top, and then it would just keep going, because it would never lose that energy. But alas, because of friction, it does convert that energy to heat and sound. Okay, what does the elevator do? Uh, when it's coming, bringing up, like when it's coming up, it's gaining potential energy. It adds gravitational potential energy to the system. So what the elevator does is it does work on the steel sphere and adds gravitational potential energy to the system, and then that gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy, heat, and sound, and then we have, again, work done on the steel sphere, adding gravitational potential energy to the system. So you can see there's all sorts of types of energy and work in the example we have in front of us today, space.